Hey, welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to hear my opinion. What movie moments totally changed your life as a kid? Ah, childhood. I spent a considerable amount of time at the cinema on the weekend, gobbling up whatever new adventure or sci-fi or fantasy feature Hollywood had to offer. And in the 80s, they were offering a lot. I want to take you back. So join me on this little trip through 10 sci-fi fantasy movie moments that changed my childhood. Jump in and let's go. At number 10, we've got the wood beast scene from Flash Gordon. As a native of Arizona and a kid who loved to catch snakes and lizards, I was always out in the desert, nonchalantly sticking my fleshy fingers into countless holes. That all changed when my parents took me to see Flash Gordon, which contained an initiation scene where young men had to stick their hands into the trees of this weird trunk in the middle of their village to see if they could avoid getting stung by the wood beast. Yeah, it's basically a scorpion and a toad that breathes really heavy. Let's just say this scene helped me quickly dispatch of any future notions for grabbing critters I couldn't see in plain view. You know how you loved running around imitating lines from your favorite characters as a kid? In 1982, I met my Waterloo upon meeting Chamberlain from the Dark Crystal. Once Chamberlain appeared for the first time and bestowed on us his monosyllabic masterpiece, I was hooked. And you know what I'm talking about. I was not the only one running around for a month bugging the shit out of everybody going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I actually know adults who do it. I did it at school, I did it on the bus. It became my only response to any question. It became answers to quizzes and tests. I got a lot of detention for Chamberlain. Mm-hmm. In all seriousness, it might have been one of my biggest influences in voices and voiceovers. Speaking of big influences, something happened earlier that year which definitely caught my attention. When Mark Singer ditched his village garb and shovel for a loincloth and sword, three words came to my young mind. Holy shit. The Beastmaster was an adolescent flesh fest. I can't quite get my hands on what changed for me at that moment but I definitely grew to appreciate this kind of movie. And I didn't forget that my friends down the street were noticing Tanya Roberts. Don't worry, here at Opinion, I wanna make sure there's something for everybody. Here's some footage. At number seven, we have the ending of Time Bandits from 1981. When Kevin returns to his normal world, the question still lingered in my mind. What was gonna become of his awful, consumer-obsessed parents? Mom, Dad, don't touch it. It's evil. I'd never seen parents get punished like that for being terrible, much less get turned into stocking stuffers for naughty children at Christmas. And the backward smoke really freaked me out. There's also something kind of creepy about Sean Connery as a fireman. I didn't go near a charcoal barbecue for months, and I insisted that my belligerent Uncle John, who I wasn't too crazy about, had to do all the grilling instead of my dad. Number six brings us to a movie that I think, in its entirety, was a moment. I had no idea what I was in for when my parents took me to see The Last Unicorn. I saw Last Unicorn in 82 at the movies And to my big surprise, this whole cartoon was filled with boobies I saw scary birds with titties And a tree with cleavage born And I stared unbelieving At my first unicorn A lot of the imagery in this movie just really scared the crap out of me and King Haggard's castle was a horrible place. Let me give you a little rundown on how a conversation would have gone between he and I. Hi, King Haggard. Uh, thanks for offering us a place to stay. I have a quick question. What is that? That's a complete human skeleton I keep on the mantle. It makes me happy. Oh, okay. I, no family pictures or candelabras or maybe a vase you want to put up there instead? No. And by the way, it occasionally drinks wine and talks. Okay. Thank you for that. I'm gonna go. There's also a bull in the basement that's on fire. Bye! The next two are not technically sci-fi or fantasy, but I still think they qualify. Number five brings us to 1985 with Warner Brothers' The Goonies. And one of my favorite movie moments I didn't expect to have. When the character of Chunk, AKA Lawrence, comes along in The Goonies, I have my new hero. He was hilarious, lovable, and loved to eat. As a teenager, which so many department store catalogs lovingly referred to as Husky, I spent many a late August slash early September combing the aisles of JCPenney and Sears with my dad, looking for school clothes that fit. So let's just say as a kid with a few extra pounds, it came with the territory that I learned to use humor 
as social currency. What really got me about this movie, which was surprising to me, was that they made a chubby kid a hero. He or she could use their sense of humor to get out of shit and save the day. It was a whole new concept. Chunk and Sloth's heroic moment of appearing on the pirate ship to save all the rest of the Goonies was astonishing to me. It was really uplifting. And I loved that Chunk never gave up on his friends. Don't think I didn't notice that he didn't get to really freaking eat until the end. This next one is bullshit. Number four, The Wrath from Above at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981. So my mom takes me to see this film on the premiere weekend. Action, adventure, Indiana Jones, what's not to like? Well, then the end happens when they open the Ark. When I try to think of what the worst possible way to die is, I usually jump to shark attack or burning. But wait a minute, if I go back to eight years old, I forgot the worst way, melting. They melted. Even more, how about exploding? How about both of them in the same scene? Yeah. I was terrified. I walked out of the theater crying. When my mom said, why are you crying? What was bothering you so bad? I said, God melted them. God melted them. Not to mention I was a huge believer in ghosts and spirits when I was a kid. Can we talk about these beautiful angels that turn into death? Ah! Don't look at it, don't look at it, don't look at it. No, 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 no. Melting, exploding, and ghosts. Before we get to the last three, let's talk about honorable mentions. Clash of the Titans. Here's hoping Zeus never develops a crush on you. Dragon Slayer. Where a skinny dipping scene reveals you haven't been camping next to who you think you have. Fantastic Planet, where tiny, tiny humans can be hung like gnats and still have sex. Gremlins, if your parents had the Johnny Mathis Christmas album played in this film like mine did, you probably never listened to it again for fear that it would summon demons from hell. For number three, we jump to 1986 with aliens. It just simply didn't get more badass than Ripley fighting the alien queen. She's the consummate heroine, caring, strong, gets stuff done, and she faces her fears. I know we talked about Mark Singer earlier, but confession time. I had a crush on Ripley. And the moment that made me fall in love with Ellen Ripley. <laughs> I've always strongly asserted that if you can get through E.T. without crying once, you're basically an automaton who's completely dead inside. E.T. changed my life. It taught me about love, loss, the power of sacrifice. And for me, the moment that wrapped it all up beautifully is the moment that Elliot has his monologue to E.T. When Elliot works up enough strength to tell E.T. I love you, I knew that something profound had happened. And even as a kid, it got to me. It was the first time as a kid that I really understood the gravity of loss. I was intensely jealous of Henry Thomas because he got to be in such an extraordinary movie. So Henry Thomas, wherever you are, thank you for Elliot. You're the shit. Woo! Well, we've made it all the way to number one. And I have no doubt that my number one is probably some of you guys' number one. What is it, you ask? 1983's Return of the Jedi, when Vader throws the Emperor over the balcony. I had never heard or seen an audience not only openly cheer, but some people jumped to their feet momentarily to applaud this moment. I was riveted. This was such an exciting and bittersweet moment because it meant a couple things. It meant that my beloved Star Wars was rapidly coming to an end, and it also meant that this chapter of my childhood was coming to a close, and there were new exciting adventures ahead. I'd also soon be staring puberty square in the face. Well, that's my list. And little did I know all those years ago that I would have a whole bucket full of moments to share with you now. Hey everybody, I want to thank you so much for tuning in again and checking things out. I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you enjoyed it as well. I want to hear from you. What were the movie moments that changed your childhood? You can put the answers right in the comments below. And I also want to extend a welcome to all my new subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you like what you see, you can do that right here. You can like and subscribe. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.